Good afternoon and welcome to the Golden Harvest Interview Series here at Farm Science Review. I'm your host, Wade Looker. I'm the agronomist that covers Ohio, and I get to work with Nathan Baker. Nathan is our guest today. Nathan is a farmer in northwest Ohio and southern Michigan. Yep. He is also a seed dealer for Golden Harvest, and he has gotten quite a bit of fame as the owner and presenter of Border View Farms on all social media channels and YouTube. So, Nathan, why don't you give us just an introduction about yourself and tell us a little bit about your operation. Sure, yeah. So, uh, my name is Nathan Baker. I uh, farm with my family up in, uh, technically we're based in Waldron, Michigan, but the uh, state line runs between my house and my parents' house or our farm. It's uh, We're right on the border there, farm in both states. So, um, I started the YouTube channel uh, a while ago and we've, we've been doing that, but we farm a little over 3,000 acres, corn, soybeans, and wheat up there. Um, yeah. So Nathan, you mentioned that you are a YouTube farmer with Border View Farms as your channel. Uh, tell us how you got started building YouTube content and what made you want to make that leap. Yeah, um, you want the long version or the short version? <laughs> I think everybody here is dying to know the full version. The full version, okay. Well, um, back in high school, uh, no. Well, I was heavily involved in FFA in high school and um, you know, a lot of the stuff we talked about back then was was promoting our brand and promoting agriculture, telling our story, and, uh, and and not letting you know people who may not have our best interest at the forefront of their intentions uh, tell our story for us. And after I graduated from uh, from college and started working with Golden Harvest, uh, going back to the family farm, and I kind of started some social media stuff. Then I was involved with Farm Bureau, and it was that same message of we got to share our story. And so I was trying to figure out how to do that. Um, sort of started with Facebook page probably back in 2010-ish, somewhere in there, um, and then started a YouTube channel. Uh, it was probably 2014, somewhere in there, when I started making some videos, but not the style that I am today. Um, I got a drone, started filming some some equipment videos and different things, put those on, got a little bit of a following built up, and then uh, probably sometime in 2018 or 19, I was watching more farming YouTube videos. And I never intended for it to be a daily thing when I started, but it started as a daily thing and it's never really changed. So um, yeah, it's it's that's how I got started and it's just grown into what it is today. You know, you mentioned that you do daily videos and that's something that's pretty unique to you. Most other YouTube farmers do not do that. What keeps you motivated to continue to post on such a regular basis? Right, so that goes back to why I started, right? It's the share your story thing. And um, my thought process, well, at first it was, I don't know what to film and what not to film, so I just film it all. And, and then it got to the point where it was like, well, how do, I, how do I increase the quality of my content, but maybe reduce the amount that we're putting out there? And well, kind of what I decided was, if I want to share what we do, and the whole intention of this YouTube thing is to promote agriculture, and you know, we're not trying to hide anything. It's not like we're doing stuff that we don't want the public to see. And so I always kind of had that in the back of my mind. Like if I take a day off from filming without explaining it the day before, people are going to wonder what I'm doing. And they're going to say, you must be doing something he doesn't want us to see. And that's not the case. So I always try and film something no matter what I'm doing. Some days it doesn't make the most exciting content. I will be the first one to admit that. Uh, other days it is really exciting, but it's always a day in the life of a modern grain farm operation. And so I, I want to show people what happens on these farms. I want to show what I do every day. And so that's what I do. You know, do you ever find yourself looking or trying to come up with things to film? Or do you truly just sit down and film whatever you wind up doing that day? Yeah, there is a little bit of that. Um, one thing when I first started this, I, I don't know how my dad thought, you know, of the whole thing at first. Um, because I, you know, I get that comment a lot of how do you how do you get it all done? How do you carry a camera all day? How do you get any work done with stuff? What what ends up happening is on those days when I don't really have anything to do, you have to find something to do because I got to have something to film, right? And so uh, it's actually a pretty good motivator to go out and find something to do. And so um, what I found that happens is you know a lot of the slow days in August or in June or whenever when when we're not actively in the fields it's a really good excuse to go out in the fields and look at stuff. Let's go out and see what's happening. Let's teach something about what our crop is doing, the growth stage that we're in right now. Uh, same thing in the winter time. You know, there's, there's days when I have to sit in front of a computer. Like that's, that's the job that needs done. Well, that is terrible YouTube video, right? 
but it also lets me get away from that for an hour or two. Let's get in the shop, find something to do, and uh, and find something that's a little bit more exciting. So, am I coming up with content just for YouTube? I mean, kind of. It's things that are good for me to be doing anyway. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely helps motivate you to get something done. So you've been doing this content for a couple of years now. What have been some of the main you know benefits that you've experienced, and maybe what are some of the drawbacks that you've seen from doing this as well? Yeah, um, well, I've certainly built up a, a little bit of a following over the last few years, and um, it is it is fun to come to shows like this and uh, meet some of the fans and the people that I'm I'm with. So that's good. But it has given me the opportunity to work with some different companies a little bit. Uh, I haven't gotten nearly into the sponsorships that some of the other YouTube channels have and stuff, but um, it does give me opportunity to test some products and see some things that uh, I may not have otherwise. So that's definitely a benefit. As far as you know, drawbacks or negatives, there's always that question mark of how much do you share, how much do you put out there. I tend to be fairly open with stuff, but um, uh, I haven't really had too much negative uh, uh, stuff from, from doing the YouTube videos yet. So, um, you know, I, I don't really think there's too much of a drawback so far. You know, and I think that does lead pretty well into the next question here, which is, you know, agriculture itself is a very private industry. And you go out of your way to share a lot of pretty private information. How do you balance posting relevant content that people are interested to learn mm -hmm. while also trying to protect some of your own, again, private information? Yeah, definitely. Um, and that is, there's a line there that you gotta, you gotta follow and try and figure out where the right spot to be is. So um, I, I tend to be fairly open, like you said. Uh, I'll show most everything and it goes back to that. I want to show what we do every day and I don't want to hide anything. I'm not trying to, to make seem, things seem like something they're not, right? Um, but there's some things that you will never see on my channel. Number one, I will tell you what fields are yielding when I'm in the combine. We started on Monday, last couple of, couple of videos ago, I showed uh, you know what the yield monitor said. And I'm very upfront that said, I haven't calibrated. I don't know if this is accurate or not and stuff, but I will show those uh, kind of results on a field by field basis. What you will never hear from me is what our farm average was. I also, like I'll say, oh, we got this 80 acres to plant or to harvest or whatever, but I've never shared the exact number of acres of whatever crop that we're farming or something. So if you pay close enough attention, I suppose you could figure that stuff out and get pretty close for what our farm averages are and stuff, but I don't actually give that kind of detailed information out. I also try really hard not to go into financial details as far as know exactly what we're paying for our inputs, whether that's seed or chemicals, land rent, any of that kind of stuff. We leave that off of the channel. Um, people know, people have a good idea what some of that stuff costs. And, and so, um, you know, again, it's, it's a balance of trying to be upfront, transparent, show everything. Um, but yeah, having a little bit of that privacy as well. Shifting gears a little bit, I think one of the things that really sets your channel apart um, and differentiates you from many of the other YouTube farmers out there is your attention to agronomy yeah. and really going over the nuts and bolts of why we do things the way that we do. Is that an intentional process where you identified a gap in the industry that you were trying to fill? Or again, is this more of an example of you hosting things that you find interesting? Um, yeah, a little bit of both, right? If you can't be entertaining, you better be informative. And I'm not necessarily the most entertaining uh, ag channel on YouTube, but uh, I, I do have fairly good knowledge from my time as a, as a uh, seed advisor with Golden Harvest here from working with Wade and with uh, other agronomists in the past. I've picked up on some of this stuff and I've got that experience. And so I wouldn't say it was necessarily me trying to fill a gap in the, in the, the, the marketplace, if you will. Um, as much as this is my passion, this is what I really enjoy. I love getting out in the cornfields and looking at stuff. Every year, the end of June, I will take a corn plant that is just pre-tassel and we completely dissect it. We're gonna take that thing apart, pull every leaf off of there, we're gonna find the tassel, we're gonna find the ears, we're gonna look at the roots and do all that stuff and really dive into the agronomy of it. And uh, I, I think the people that have watched that know that I just really enjoy that side of this. It's a passion of mine. And so um, it's more so, a little bit of, you know, it's good content for YouTube. People really seem to enjoy that educational aspect of it, but it's also something that I really enjoy talking about. You know, it's clear that you build up a really nice following. What do you attribute that success to the most? And then to follow up on that, 
has there been a moment in time where you've looked at it and said, you know what, I've I've made it. Like I've made something yeah. of this that you've been particularly excited about. Yeah, so the build up to the success and stuff. Um, the the probably the biggest contributing factor is is consistency, and it's almost over the top consistency with posting every day. But people have come to expect videos, and uh, uh, a week or so ago here, I was gone for five days in a row. I didn't make a video, and people were like, "What happened to you?" You know, and so you you kind of start to. Most of these people I've never met. The people that watch my videos, the people that comment on them, most of them I, I've never met. I have no idea who they are. Even the people that come up to me at the show, if they are somebody that comments on it, I don't know because I don't connect the names, right? Um, but I do see the same name show up in the comments, and you kind of almost build a following and a relationship with some of these people uh, through that. And it's it's a strange dynamic, but um, they come to expect my post on a consistent basis. I have never cared a lot about the analytics, the statistics of it. You know, obviously I want to do well. I want things to continue to grow. Um, but I didn't expect to get a million followers overnight. It was never, never goal, never going to happen that way. Um, has there ever been a moment when I feel like I made it? I, I wouldn't say any specific moment. My growth has been fairly steady from the time. So going back a few questions, I started the YouTube channel making some just, you know, videos of the equipment and stuff. Well, one of those videos that I happened to make was a neighbor of ours has a, uh, a big bud tractor and a 21 bottom plow. It's pretty impressive equipment for, for anybody, um, but especially people that don't come from, from an ag world to see that kind of size. And so I filmed that with my drone at the time, put almost no effort into editing or anything. I just took the video off the drone and I put it on YouTube. There's no music, there's no voiceover, there's no cuts, there's no nothing. Uh, that video has five and a half million views. And so it kind of got me established I had a base of subscribers from that, so when I started making the vlogs, it's just been a nice steady growth from that two or 3,000 subscribers that I started with up to the 30,000 that we're at now. So um, there's never been that I made it moment. There was that initial like, holy cow, I hit something. How do we replicate that and do it again? Because that was really cool. Uh, I've never done it since. But, um, you know, obviously when I get to meet some of the other ag YouTubers, that's a really cool thing for me. Uh, I met Brian Brown here a few years ago. Uh, he's a really good guy, and there's a few other ones that I've met. So um, those are nice. It's always cool when I, you know, come here to the show and meeting some of the fans and stuff, and you think, wow, this is, I've got some reach. It's really cool. But, yeah. Now, you mentioned your fans. We've got a handful standing here today. Um, what has been your favorite fan interaction that you've had over the years? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, too. I, you know, I can't necessarily point out any one. Um, I, I've had more fans come up to me today here walking around the show than, than I ever have at a farm show. So that's kind of cool. But that's really, this is where I get to see people, right? Um, it happens occasionally in my day-to-day -day life where somebody says, hey, oh, I, I saw your YouTube videos. Happened to my wife one time. She took my kids to the roller skating rink and one of the other dads there is like, hey, I watch your husband all the time. And I, I think it caught her off guard a little bit, but it was kind of a cool story. Um, but yeah, coming to these farm shows, whether it's here at Farm Science Review, um, the farm show we have up in Michigan there at the Agro Expo, or even going down to Louisville to the National Farm Machinery Show. Uh, this is where I get to, to interact with people and stuff. And it can be a little awkward, right? I, they don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But I do enjoy it when people come up and say hi and at least shake my hand. So, Well, in addition to you being a YouTube star, you also are a very in-depth analytical farmer. Yep. So what are some of the agronomic practices that have worked really well for you in the past? And is there anything that you're looking to change on your own operation moving sure. forward? Yeah, um, so that, that you're right on that analytical side of stuff. And I am uh, really big into trialing and testing things. I've made a very conscious effort over the past two to three years here to make sure that I'm tracking this stuff better, uh, doing really well done field trials. Uh, we've done some together with some high management versus standard practice plots. That's all gone really well. Um, as far as practices and stuff that we're, we're learning from those plots, right? So things like V5 fungicide on corn. I started trialing that, did, you know, 80 acres or something the first year. That worked pretty well, so we'll try a little bit more the next year. Well, that is, like, that is a no-brainer for me anymore because I've seen such a positive result from it. And it's one of those things that doesn't cost me a lot of money. I can do it with my own sprayer. I don't have to hire it done. And the returns on it have been really, really good. So uh, there's that. I've done a little bit of experiment with some uh, some early planting or some ultra early planting. Uh, we've got a field of beans that we planted in March in Michigan, which is unheard of, um, but they look 
fantastic. And I'm really excited to get into harvest and see what we're going to do. This is the second time now that I've planted some beans in March and made it to harvest with them with no replant issues. Uh, so that's something that, that, you know, the first year I did, I think, 17 acres. This year I did 75 acres. Next year, if we get a window, which is always iffy, if we're going to get ground conditions that we can plant in March, but I won't be afraid to go and plant a bunch of beans in March if that opportunity presents itself. So, uh, yeah, we do a lot of different trials and stuff like that, different products from different companies that I'll test for a couple of years before we go all in on them and stuff. But, um, yeah, we do a lot of that. Perfect. Well, um, we're wrapping up here. You're going to go home, and you're probably going to jump in the combine. Probably. So what kind of expectations do you have for harvest this year? How do crops look back, uh, back home? And, yeah, tell us what your expectations are. Yeah. Um, so we got started planting a little bit late outside of those March planted beans this year. We were maybe 10 days to two weeks later starting than I would have liked to have get. But that said, we got done planting about the same time as normal. So we had a pretty short window this year to get stuff planted. Um, had decent rainfall early in the growing season. Got a little dry there at the end of June when we were starting to combine wheat. And then we caught some rain. We had a hurricane blow through the first or second week of July that we got two and a half inches of rain and it was perfect. We needed it. And then it got dry again. And then we caught some rain the first of August and that was fantastic for us. Uh, crops looked really good. You know, it rains in August and you should have really good beans, right? So uh, we had high expectations because of that. I think our corn looked pretty good. Uh, now it hasn't rained a lot since then. We're very dry now, not, not like some of the rest of Ohio, especially Southern Ohio. Um, so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, trying to temper my expectations a little bit, but I do think that our crops are going to be really good. I think we have potential to be a little bit better than we were last year, at least on the corn. Um, beans, we'll see. We got, got started into some beans this week, and they're my early beans that I think are finished before we got dry. Uh, that August rain that we got really helped them out. We'll see if it changes when we get into the later ones, but they're running in the mid-70s, and I would not have guessed that coming into it. So we'll see. We play around with a little bit of irrigation. I think my irrigated corn is going to be very good, um, but it's so hard to tell until the combine gets in the field. The last question of the day. Okay. This is the day that all the students are here at Mark yeah. Science Review. There's going to be people that see this, that look at Nathan Baker and say, hey, I want to be the next YouTube star. Yep. What advice do you have for any of these kids around here today that want to start their own YouTube channel? The hardest thing to do is start. So I, you know, I started this channel just making some video clips of equipment and stuff. The hardest thing that I do, it took me years of like watching other people. You know, it was months after I found some of the other ag YouTubers doing these type of style of videos before I'm like, I can do this. And I knew I could do it, but it's like, how do you start? And I'm, I'm that type of person that, you know, if a, if a TV show series comes on and I don't see the first episode, I can't watch any of the series because I'm going to feel lost the whole time. So how do you start? How do you just jump into this and start something was kind of my thing. And, and eventually one day I'm just like, all right, we're just going to do it. And it was the middle of harvest. Like it was a, the wrong time to start this. It wasn't you know, the first day of spring planting or the first day of harvest or the first of the year or any of those logical times. It was middle of harvest. We're just going to do it. And so um, one thing that I have really learned going through not just the YouTube channel and the, the social media journey, but just life in general since I've gotten out of college is you never know where that next opportunity is going to come from. Things just appear out of thin air sometimes. And uh, if you if you put some effort into it, you, you can make it happen. So um, you just got to start. And you can't expect to... to explode overnight to the point where it's going to be, you know, a huge following or something like that, or even profitable where you're making money on it. It takes time to build that following, uh, but you won't ever get there if you don't just start. That is perfect advice. There's going to be a lot of folks that see this that aren't familiar with you as well. So why don't you give us a plug on where they can find you across social media. Again, your YouTube channel is Board of View Farms. So, yep, so where else can they find you? Yep, so uh, uh, YouTube, you can find me uh, on, on YouTube at Borderview Farms. I'm sure if you search Borderview Farms, you'll find that there. You can go to borderviewfarms.com and get to my website. It has links to all the other social medias. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Again, it's at Borderview Farms, Facebook at Borderview Farms. And uh, I think that's the most of it. I do have I do have X. It's an X now, but I haven't logged in in like three years. So you're not going to follow anything there. Um, I've, I've started 
playing on TikTok a little bit. I don't post much there either. But uh, yeah, YouTube is definitely the bread and butter. That's where I post every day. What I have found is that I do so much on YouTube, it really limits what I feel like I can do on the other social media stuff because I just like, it, it, one, it's too much. You just can't get it done, can't handle all of that. Um, and two, the content's already out there. So one thing I haven't gotten into yet is cutting up some of the long format videos into shorts and doing some of that where you can post them on different platforms. Probably something I should look into, but um, we haven't got there yet. So one more comment on the, the previous, on getting started with, you know, how do you start YouTube and stuff. I, when I, one of the things that held me back when I was started was there was already guys doing this, right? There is so many ag YouTube channels out there right now. And you may think, why would I start that? Why would we have another one? But in my opinion, the more voices that we have sharing the agricultural story, the better. Like, I don't care if I ever get to that kind of level because I fit a niche, right? It's that educational side and, and teaching people about what we do a little bit more in depth than some of these other channels. But they fill a niche too, and they're reaching a different audience than I am. And the more people that we can talk to and, and share what agriculture is doing, the better. So um, I encourage anybody to start one if they want to. That is perfectly well said. Nathan, thank you for being such an advocate for agriculture across the industry. Uh, thank you to the viewers for viewing uh, this year's first inaugural a Golden Harvest interview session uh, here at Farm Science Review. And we will catch you guys next time. Again, I am your host, Wade Looker. And Nathan, what seed brand do you sell again? <laughs> Golden Harvest. There we go. Thanks again. <laughs>